everybody. Welcome back to another Tuesday's Tech Talk. I know we've been talking about crossovers a lot lately and looking into that and today we're going to back up just a little bit and we're going to look at specifically the DIY market and think about a comparison of the DIY market to the retail market product and what you get dollar for dollar performance wise uh, when you walk into a store and you buy a speaker versus you order a kit and you build it yourself or maybe you order just the parts only and you try to come up with something on your own that's the do-it-yourself market and let's start with what you get in a store and how the price structures are built into what you buy retail if you walk into a store and let's say you're buying a pair of speakers that are $500 a pair um, so you walked into Best Buy and picked out your speakers that speaker that was $500 a pair retail you have to keep in mind that the store that's selling you that product wants a 50 point margin on that so what that means is for every dollar they spend on it they're gonna sell it for two dollars so that $500 pair of speakers they bought for $250 and that was shipped and delivered to their door well the shipping on a pair of let's say it's mini monitors that went to their door was $30 so there's $220 left there that the manufacturer sold it to the retail store for so of that $220 that manufacturer in any product they produce they're looking to double their money uh, for every dollar they spend they've got to make a dollar and they've got to use that dollar to promote and advertise the product and pay their employees and pay the electric bill and the utilities and the rent or the mortgage just like every other business so there's a certain amount of profit there that has to be built in just for them to break even or make a little bit of profit margin at the end so when you're looking at cost to produce cost to produce they want to double their money so the $220 that's left, they had to build that for $110. And let's say uh, the packaging cost, if it was something that was packaged over in China, the boxes and the material and everything that went to packaging it, meaning the pre-cut foam blocks that fit in and around the speakers that hold them in shipping to keep them from getting destroyed, that stuff's really expensive. Uh, in the U.S. for a pair of mini monitors, uh, you can easily spend $80 to $90 in quantity buying that packing material for boxing and packaging. Uh, over in China, they do it real cheap. Uh, it could be $10 to $20 uh, for all the boxing of everything. So now you're at $90 to $100 total that they had to work with to build that pair of speakers that was $500. And usually over half to maybe 60% of that is going to be the cost of the cabinets themselves so those cabinets may be thirty dollars a piece for them to to have made over in china uh, that's grills and everything that's a pretty lightly made box uh, that's not buying you a lot so um, and that's on the conservative side i mean you could easily do forty dollars a box if it's got a veneer on it or something like that or if it's got a finish like this on it, it's going to it's going to be way more than that uh, but an inexpensive finish uh, you know you're you're looking at them spending sixty seventy dollars uh, so in the end they're down to a woofer and a tweeter all the crossover parts they've got to provide you all of that for twenty bucks uh, maybe twenty twenty eight dollars something like that for that pair of speakers that you're paying five hundred bucks for so keep those scales in mind when you're looking at something in the retail market whatever it's retailed for about one-fifth of that is what they have to actually build it for uh, now as you move up the scale to something like this this is a whole lot nicer speaker this sells for nearly two thousand um, dollars they do a beautiful piano finish uh, the grills are held on magnetically they're really nice uh, the drivers are pretty nice quality uh, but when you do the math backwards um, you know they have to build this pair for under 400 bucks and for the drivers you're getting that's a it's a pretty nice value there you know again good quality drivers uh, but when you look inside um, you look at the crossover it's really cheaply made uh, 18 gauge wire um, 
It's made in China inductors, which are typically recycled copper. It's just the way it goes over there. Uh, they do have poly caps. That's a bonus. Uh, they're not using electrolytic. Um, the resistors are the sandcast resistors. Those are junk. Uh, those shouldn't be using anything um, home audio related. Um, so not a lot of high quality there. The internal wiring is uh, pretty cheesy, multi-stranded, PVC jacketed. Um, you know, it's kind of sad. And the performance of the speaker, eh. uh, the front port created some issues with the output of the woofer. There was, it caused some roughness there. There were some peaks and dips in the upper woofer response. And um, the spectral decay looked pretty rough. There was a lot of stored energy there in the spectral decay. Uh, overall balance of the frequency response was a little choppy. Um, not great. But that's about average for what you see in this price point. It's stuff that I measure and test often. That's what you get. Um, looking at stuff more mass produced, it gets a lot worse than that. Um, if you look at, uh, say for instance, the Paradigm line, I've taken apart and upgraded quite a few of their models. Here is a picture of the crossover that came out of the Studio 60. If you see the picture there, the crossover uh, has all iron core inductors. It's all the dental floss variety gauge, so a pretty small gauge. Electrolytic capacitors, sandcast resistors. Uh, they may have thrown a poly cap in there on the tweeter circuit, but everything's mounted on the binding post cup so they can quickly and easily assemble the thing. It's probably $12, $15 worth of parts thrown into that thing. and. Yeah, you know, the response is rough. Uh, the phase relationship is not that great with the drivers. There's issues. Um, most of those mass-produced speakers um, don't think just because it's a big name brand that the performance across the line is going to be fantastic. I mean, we measure them all the time, and sometimes they're pretty rough. So, what's your alternative? The DIY market. Let's look at that. When you buy a kit, especially some of our kits, you're getting something that's professionally designed. And we've been doing this for a while. We have a pretty strong foothold in the DIY market. Um, really good market share there. All of our kits are really well engineered. There's no issues like what you see in most of these commercial models. This uh, parts that are laid out over here is the parts for one of our XLS Encore kits. I thought it'd be perfect to use as an example. Um, the tweeter is one of the best soft dome tweeters out there. Uh, one of the best that we've worked with. It is, um, it's got a good cone material uh, or dome material, soft dome, and 94 dB sensitivity. It uses no ferrofluid. Um, it has a deep rear chamber that is damped with uh, damping material, and a cone-shaped centerpiece in the middle that helps that rear wave bury itself into the back of it. It also helps lower the free air resonance, which is really low and uh, we usually measure it around 500 hertz FS and it can be crossed really low really easily and has a beautiful sound to it. Just a really high quality tweeter. Uh, the woofer is um, one of our M165's. It uses a polymer frame which is non-resonant which is a big bonus. It surface mounts so you're not having to remove material from the front baffle to countersink it so you're still maintaining your cabinet strength. It uses um, just a one inch voice coil, actually I think 26 millimeter voice coil and um, it uses a treated paper cone. It has a really smooth response, uh, nothing super fancy in the motor structure or anything like that. Just well designed, no problems, no internal resonances, really smooth response, really smooth roll off. Um, the materials that are used produce a really smooth sound, really smooth, lightweight moving mass really detailed, good bass response, good all-around driver. For the money, really tough to beat. And when I say for the money, it's priced really low because we buy these things in huge quantities. Same with the tweeter. We've got thousands of these things in stock. Same with the little woofers. So we offer the kit in a basic version. 249 bucks, you get a pair. It comes with a binding post cup. It uses the Ursi 16 gauge inductors. These are Four nines pure copper made in the USA inductors. It uses the link resistors. 
It's a good quality non-inductive resistor. It's not a sandcast resistor. It uses the Ursi poly caps. Uh, it, it uses a Sonicap Gen 2 bypass cap on the tweeter circuit. It's for the money really tough to beat. And hundreds, of, probably over a thousand of these things have been sold. They used to be sold through AV123 as a finished product. They won a ton of awards. There was a Speaker of the Year award, a Product of the Year award with some of these models. And uh, the kits have done really well also. Uh, just hard to beat. And then we offer upgrades. You know, not only do we upgrade other companies' products, we offer upgrades to our own products. So if you want to take them up the ladder, no problem. Um, we can substitute those capacitors for pure sonic caps. We can step up the detail levels and the clarity across the board on these things. We can substitute the link resistors for the mills resistors. We can substitute the binding post cup for tube connectors. This is a huge improvement. You get a big piece of chunk of metal out of the signal path and you replace it with a copper tube that's completely hollow. Um, so with the tube connector you have internal speaker wire, external speaker cable, tip-to-tip -tip contacts run by a copper tube. It's low mass, puts a lot less in the signal path, improves clarity across the board over your standard binding post, uh, binding post that you see in a cup like these or these. Um, just to, you just can't beat it in clarity. So you can start adding up the upgrades and spend a little over 400 bucks for a pair. If you want, we can even throw in a MyFlex uh, copper film cap to bypass the tweeter circuits with. That's another level of improvement in clarity and detail. Uh, once you're done, you've got a speaker that if sold through traditional um, marketing techniques, sold through stores, you're looking at a speaker that have to be 2500 3000 a pair depending on the finish. Uh, just because of the cost it is to produce. So, do you buy a speaker that's in the store that's $500 or $1,000? Or do you buy that's going to have $50 or $100 worth of parts in it? Or in some cases, mm, nearly $200 worth of parts in it. Versus actually spending your money on $400 worth of actual parts that are high quality parts. And these higher quality parts, parts make a tremendous difference in improvement in clarity. Imaging, detail levels, you name it space between notes which means reduced smearing because the caps are faster faster in their discharge all that makes a tremendous difference so your dollar for dollar goes much further with DIY then I know what you're thinking too you're thinking well I don't know if DIY is for me because that means I have to follow the plans and I actually have to build out one of these cabinets maybe I don't have any woodworking tools maybe I don't have any woodworking experience hey that's okay we got guys that can do that stuff for you too. Uh, Mike Lundy has been doing finished cabinets for quite a few of our customers for the last two or three years as a side business and he's busy full time doing it and he does a fantastic job. His cabinets look great and he can send you the cabinets finished or I can ship him the kit and he can put it together for you and do it finished. Or we've got CNC cut flat packs that are available with our higher end kits that come with the kit. So you have all MDF, all CNC cut, all finished. All you have to do is glue it up, put it together. And then recently, Peter, one of our other really good customers, he's a really good hobbyist and audiophile. He's picked up a pretty nice CNC machine to as an addition to his woodworking shop. And he's been CNCing some stuff out. And he cut out a flat pack for this speaker. For the XLS Encore and I have to share it with you. It looks fantastic. Let's look and I've opened up the box and I peeked inside and I've looked at what's in there and it looks so good that I wanted to save completely opening it for this video so you can see what you get and how you get it. Let me grab it here and move this stuff out of the way. Here's how it came. As you can see box really well. So inside all this material here, inside here, let me just dump it out. It's always fun to open up a box. Get rid of that. 
here are the guts. Here's the whole thing, all the pieces, all pre-cut and ready to go. I can't wait to look at this stuff. I saved it. So you can see just how good of a job he's done in the packing and the material, making sure that it arrives to you safe and sound, and just the quality and the workmanship of it all. I could just, I could tell from looking at it, without even opening it. Oh. These little babies here are the little circuit boards for the crossover. You can mount all your parts on this, draw your little holes in it, and zip tie all your parts to these boards, and they're perfect. They look great. Probably made them out of some excess wood he has, but they're the perfect thickness and they're perfect size. Um, I'll have Ron throw up a picture now of a pair of these crossovers that I've assembled for one of our other customers. What we do is um, lay everything out. It's all point to point, which means there's no wiring involved in hooking any of the parts together because you don't want that stuff in the signal path. You want each part connected to one another uh, with no, no additional pieces or parts. And the wire that comes with our kits, I've got some of it back here. It isn't some of the stuff you see from these Chinese made companies. This is US made copper, four nines pure copper in polyethylene. It's not PVC jacketed wire, that's polyethylene. Much better sound quality. Solid core, easy to maneuver, easy to work with, stays in place. Good stuff, easy to assemble. So, Ooh, look at these. These are the side panels. He's drilled little holes in it for the dowel rod. These are braces. They go side to side. It's all CNC cut. Love it. Top plate. Top or bottom, I guess. So there'll be four of those. Here's the back. This one's cut for tube connectors. I love tube connectors. He has another version that he's cut for the binding post if you want to do the cheaper binding post version. This upper section here, hole for the port. Oh, and look at there. Look at that front baffle. That looks good. That's going to just, uh, just drop right into these things. And he's got the little side braces. i got to open these up. Oh, that's really cool. These are little corner braces. They'll fit in there like this, diagonally, and go from side to side or end to end. And he's machined little spots in there so that they glue right in, help structurally support that thing. You want a rigid structure, nice solid cabinet. There are the other sides. Uh, the more solid it is, the less resin it's gonna be. Uh, of course, then you can add no res, line it with the no res material, and uh, that helps further deaden the cabinet walls. So this is easy to put together. All you need is a few clamps and glue and glue the thing up and you could take Duratex and just roller coat the whole thing in Duratex. Um, and after it's done in Duratex, which hides all the seams, you could paint it uh, any color you want. And for a total of maybe five or 600 bucks with all the upgrades, you've got the performance of a top level mini monitor. So can you DIY? Yeah, you can DIY. This is what I consider beginner to novice level kit. And you have the support of us and all the guys in the GR Research community that posts on the GR Research uh, forum at Audio Circle. You can ask any questions there and you're gonna get 10 other guys that have done the same thing and they're gonna give you feedback on it all. Even recessed the backside of the woofer hole. Most companies don't do that, and the inside sharp edge will cause a little diffraction and a little wiggle in the woofer's response. He did a great job on these. Uh, I'm sure he'll chime in with some pricing. Uh, it's not He's kicked around some numbers with me. It's not very much. It's well worth it. It makes it real easy. Like I said, this is beginner level to novice level maybe, but we've got guys that have never done any of this before, and they always have built it successfully. Um, you'll need a solder and iron. Uh, you'll need your basic tools. You'll need some uh, a number fixed 15 Torx wrench to screw in all of the screws that go in the driver holes. Um, but altogether, it's pretty simple. 
I mean, we even give you the screws, the wire, the solder, heat shrink for sealing the wire. I mean, everything you need in a kit is in a kit. So that's why DIY kits are so much fun. Uh, there's the pride and the joy of building it yourself and the fun that goes into doing this stuff. I've even got uh, celebrity customers that you would never imagine uh, are audiophiles and are into DIY. They love doing this stuff. It is fun and it's something you're going to appreciate a lot more than if you went out and spent two or three thousand dollars on a pair of speakers versus something you spent five or six hundred dollars on maybe and you wound up with even better performance. That's good value. That's it for today. That's what I wanted to share with you about the DIY market. If you got further questions about DIY or kits or things of that nature, throw them in the comments section. I'll see if I can answer them. Thanks for tuning in.